Welcome to Hope Academy, my name is Mr. O, and today I'm going to be explaining around the binomial and geometric distributions. And so the purpose for today's video, this specific video, is to provide mainly a comparison between binomial and geometric distributions, how to understand them, and when do you, can you identify when to use binomial or when do you use geometric. Um, in the later videos, I will go into depth around how to apply the binomial distribution in specific type of questions and when can how to use the geometric distribution in another different video. But today is just mainly focused around the comparison between the two. And so in front of me is the 2009 AP Stats Fruit Response questions. It doesn't have to be 2009, they always provide this every year, it looks exactly the same. And it's important for you to know that what tools are provided to you from College Board on this exam. And so in front of me is this equation bank that they do provide on the exam. And what they do tell you right here is that this is the binomial distribution. And they do mention that right here, binomial distribution with parameters and P. And underneath it is the equations that they do provide. So this is the primary equation for the binomial distribution. This is the mean standard deviation. And that's like the main important things you do need to know for the binomial distribution. But be aware that on the AP statistics examination, they actually do not provide you with the geometric distribution um, equation. And so it's important for you to recognize how to use this binomial distribution to sort of help you work out or like remember what a geometric distribution equation is. It's also possible for you just to memorize the geometric distribution equation and it will help you also along the way. But for today's purpose, I will first provide you with a geometric distribution equation and I'm actually going to go into depth around a comparison between the binomial and geometric distribution equation. And so I'm going to go ahead and do so. So first thing first, this is the geometric distribution equation. So geometric distribution. And so when we are talking about geometric distribution, the important thing, at least for me when I think about it, is that geometric distribution is the idea that when do we get the first success? And I will provide more in-depth discussion around that, but be aware that the equation is based around when the first success comes around. And so the best way to remember these equations is that I will provide it sort of in this format. Mm -hmm. Times P, okay? So probability 1 minus p to the n minus 1 times p. And this is all the possible failures before your first success, okay? And so for the mean for these geometric distributions will always be 1 over p, and standard deviation will be square root of 1 over p over p squared, okay? And so that is the equation format for geometric distribution. But the point is that, that that's not the main primary importance. It is important to know the equation, but it's also important for you to be able to recognize when is it that binomial distribution comes in and when does geometric distribution comes in. And so I'm gonna go more into discussion around this. So when we are talking about binomial distributions, and now I'm gonna go ahead and actually write these equations again, but now side by side, so that you can actually see the comparison and when do they occur. And along with my personal beliefs or more like my personal perspective on the de definition, how to interpret it, and how to go about doing so, okay? So binomial distribution, first things first, the property is that it requires a fixed number of trials. So when I talk about fixed number of trials, that means that if... I, I tell you, I have 10 number of attempts doing this thing, or I have 20 number of attempts doing this thing, or 30. So usually is very clearly stated how many trials there are existent. And so that this is just general trials. It doesn't have to be um, specifically this many fails before success. It's just that generally there's a fixed number of trials. And usually, this is usually based on two possible, you know, there are two factors. So what I mean by two factors is that either there is six, there is a success, quote unquote, success or failure is one possible example, success or failure. But this example also extends out to other poss possibilities that geometric distribution doesn't really go into depth on. So it could be possibly on heads versus tails. It could be even male versus female. And these are a lot of just random examples I'm just thinking off of my head. And it's just that the, the point is that these could have any possible number of each category. So that means that if I told you that um, when I was co flipping coins, um, I want to know what's my probability when I have 20 flips of a coin. 
And this is my example for the problem. So if I have 20 flips on a coin, right? Um, and I tell you that I get 12 heads, eight tails, what's my you know probability of doing this? And that's where this sort of binomial distribution question comes into play. And you have to understand that because there's no, no number of successes that are defined here, there's just 12 heads, eight tails, automatically it's very clearly stated to me that this is going to be a binomial distribution since there's only two possible choices available. And thus that's where the equation comes into play, where is the n k p to the k power uh, 1 minus p to the n minus k equals to the probability of, let's just say, n equals to x, okay? And so, the, the or actually just n, I'll just leave it as n, okay? And so, the point is that, that this, for this equation right here, this is the usual equation we use for binomial distribution, and we have to just understand that there are fixed number of trials, and that these values, 12 and 8, will go into these specific categories, with n, for this example, being equal to 20, k, you could define as your quote-unquote your choice, you could do 12 or 8, but let's say it is 12, and then p will be your probability of it occurring. So because it is a coin, and assuming that the coin is uh, not biased by any means, there's no weights on it or anything like that, your p is just going to be 50% or 0.5, as we'll usually do in these questions. Are Usually the p values are in decimal format, not in percentile. And so that, go, that sort of explains generally the binomial distribution. I will explain in another video more in depth as to how do you, you know, solve our binomial. But this is just for, for this purpose, is just to identify. But geometric distribution is all about the first success. So that means, when does the first time does this become successful? When can I say that just something occurs and we are good, okay? And so usually it is also very similar to a success or, success, success or failure concept, but it's mainly focused on that. It is mainly focused on my, my number of successes until the failure occurs, right? Or whatever not, okay? So what I mean by that is that, let's say we'll take the same coin flip concept, but but rather than giving you a fixed number saying that I did 20 flips, I will actually tell you something in the frame of like, oh, I flipped, huh, what's the probability that I flip, it takes me five heads, or like flip of the coins, I get, it takes me five heads until my first success, aka I get my first tails, that leads to my first tails. Okay, and so there's no specific number like there's like 12 and 8 here is fixated rather They'll tell you that what's my probability that it actually takes me a coin flip I get five heads and then finally my first quote-unquote success is the tails And so when we're dealing with that a lot of times we are using the same equation as we mentioned before which is still going to be like the P of X equals to N equals to and I did write this down before but it's okay to write it again So when, when we are looking at this equation, it, it's important to understand that the same sort of procedure does play out in the sense that n will be my total number of trials, a.k. including the tails, which is going to be 6 in this scenario. And basically p is going to be 0.5, assuming that the coin, of course, is fair. And so when we are talking about the, the coin is fair and whatever or not, um, it is important to see that when we do a comparison side by side, there are actually some similar properties properties that do exist between binomial and geometric distribution. If we look at binomial dist uh, distribution right here, this portion right here, and I'm going to put like a thick bracket right here, is actually going to be very similar to this part right here. If you notice, 1 minus p, 1 minus p is actually in play right here. But if you notice right here, it's n minus k, while this is n minus 1. The main reason why this is the case is that for binomial distributions, we have a specific number of k possibilities for heads and tails. But when we are talking about the terms of the geometric distribution, there's always going to be only one tails or only one success that exists in this question. And thus, that k value will always be 1 in a sense. And so that helps you sort of narrow it down. And because the second part, and I'm doing put like a little semi, you know, curve right here, will be this P right here in all technicalities. Why? The reason why is that this K, as I mentioned, is one. That means that this K right here on the P of K will be one right here too. And that helps me a lot to remember how binomial geometric distribution equations do have a very deep relationship with each other. 
Um, be aware though that binomial distribution also includes this nk, and I do want to mention be, before continuing on that a lot of notations are provided like this nk format. Another notation for nk right here will also be nck or ncr is the combination concept or n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial and so on the calculator you could actually compute that value out um, a lot of times for example if I go on my ti84 and I'm going to pull it out right here real quick so on the ti84 if I click the button math and my button here is a little bit worn out but if you push math right here and you're going to push the arrow key to probability ncr is actually provided right here but how at least for my calculator how it works is that let's say I want to know 5c3 5c3 so I'm going to type 5 math go to probability, go to NCR3, and it will give you the specific value. And uh, that was just a random example I provided, but just be aware that you could actually punch it out real quick, rather rather than having to compute this out. Um, but uh, as a side note, as I was mentioning, this NK part right here is not going to be involved in your geometric distribution. So if you could just remember a side note, that binomial distribution is a little bit more complicated than the geometric distribution equation, that it does not have this, then you should be good to go. Um, you don't need to necessarily memorize it. That will just be sort of your guidance to remember how to solve out for geometric distribution um, without having to completely memorize the bin both binomial and geometric distribution equations. And that concludes my explanation for today between binomial and geometric distribution. Please do let me know if you have any questions or concerns below. Um, I will continue to make more videos like this, so please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, and please do like our Facebook page, and we'll continue to make content like this. I hope you have a wonderful day.